Hello and welcome back. In today's tutorial, we are going to be drawing this Highland cow in Procreate. This tutorial is going to be divided into two main parts. The first part is going to be the actual drawing and coloring of the cow, and the second part is going to be adding the risograph effect. To get that effect, the brushes that I am using today are from the Risograph set, which is made by Uproot Brushes. For the drawing portion, I'm going to be using this Crispy Crayon Mono Weight brush, and then I will be using these textures for the Risograph texture portion. I will have these Risograph brushes linked in the video description below if you want to follow along exactly. You can follow along with any style of brush for the drawing portion. If you want it to be as close as possible to this uh, graphic mono weight look, a few things to look for in a brush would be for it to be one consistent line weight. So if I go into the inking panel, most of these brushes have a lot of taper to them and are pressure sensitive for size, meaning that when I press harder, the stroke, the brush stroke, it's thicker, and when I use less pressure or press more lightly, it is thinner. You can certainly follow along with a pressure sensitive brush, but if you want to get this mono weight look, you can easily make some brush adjustments that you can then later on reset. I'm going to demonstrate with the Inca brush from the inking panel. This comes with Procreate. If you tap on the brush, it'll bring you into the brush studio. And from here, what we're going to do first is go down to the third one down, the taper option. And this does not have any pressure taper settings set. So we don't have to do anything here. If the brush that you're using does, you'll just want to drag these sliders out. Touch taper is for if you're using a non-Apple Pencil stylus or if you're drawing with your finger. So. If you're using an Apple Pencil, you don't have to worry about that. If you aren't using an Apple Pencil and you want that mono weight look, you can just drag the tip sizes down and then any of these sliders, make sure that they are set to none. So all on the left side. Then under Apple Pencil, this setting is what controls the stroke width via pencil pressure. We're going to set that down to zero and just like that you can see it becomes mono weight. This is probably the only settings that you'll need to adjust but I will recommend if you are making changes to a brush make sure before you do that they have a reset point. Now this is a default Procreate brush so I automatically know I can always reset it back to its original state because that functionality is built into the app. If you're using a brush that you downloaded from somebody else and you're making changes, before you make any of those changes, you'll just wanna pop down to about this brush and make sure that a reset point is set. If it doesn't have one set, you can set one before you make any of those changes. Once we're all done with our adjustments, I'm going to tap done. And then when I draw, this is a much more consistent line weight. Now this brush looks like it has some rotational adjustment. So you can see, depending on the direction of my stroke, the thickness changes. That doesn't bother me so much for this, but if you want to change that too, you certainly can. So those are some things to look for in a alternative brush, but I am going to be using, as I said, the Crispy Crayon Mono Weight brush because that has all of those things that I'm looking for and more. Now we're going to get set up with the canvas. I am currently working in a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas. The exact canvas that I am working in is available to download for my newsletter subscribers. This is just an easy way for you to plug in and immediately start following the tutorial without doing all of the prep work because I did it for you here. So the advantages of that are, it has all of the layers set up with the blend modes that we'll be using in this tutorial. The file that is available to download does not have the paper texture in it. That is something that you can add separately if you wish. But it will have the color palette, the reference, 
and then all the layers set up. And it'll also have some of these canvas settings that we're about to do already turned on and done for you. If you're following along and you wanna set this up on your own, not a problem, I will walk you through that next. Now, these two layers here are for reference, they are optional. The functional layers that we are going to be working on will be two layers set to the normal blend mode. This will be where we draw our dark outlines and then our color fill will act as a bit of a stencil for when we add our texture later on. Then speaking of texture, I have these four Rizo layers set to the multiply blend mode. Then as I mentioned, I do have a paper texture here for the drawing portion, I'm just going to be working on these main two layers. And then for the second part, we will jump down to these four. To set up symmetry on the canvas, I'm going to tap the wrench here to access the actions menu. And then under canvas, we're going to toggle on drawing guide. Now this comes up as a grid, so then I am going to select edit drawing guide. From here on this bottom bar, I'm going to tap symmetry and this automatically pulls us up into a vertical symmetry, meaning that it'll be mirrored left to right and vice versa. Then I'm tapping done here. And when I open my layers panel, the layer that I was selected on when I went and turned on the drawing guide now is assisted. So this has symmetry turned on, as you can see when I draw on it. And if I go to an unassisted layer, this is just like normal. To toggle on and off assist for each of these layers, what you'll do is just tap on the layer to bring up the side menu and then select or deselect drawing assist. These two layers, I at this time will start out with them being assisted. And we are going to be starting initially on this outlines layer. The next thing that I'm going to do is bring in a reference. To do that, I'm tapping once more on the wrench under canvas and selecting reference. Now I had already imported this, but I have this JPEG available to download for everybody that's linked in the description box as well. And this has both the reference image and the color palette. Something very cool about the reference pane is that you can use the color picker within that. So that's how we will access our colors today. If you want to adjust the size of the pane, you can do that by dragging the lower right corner and you can adjust the height and width accordingly. Now with our reference set up, I have turned off my colors and reference layer and I am set to work on the outlines layer. I'm going to select my black and I have my crispy crayon mono weight brush. And before I start drawing, what I'm going to do is set a size point. This will be helpful when we draw to easily jump back to the exact same size for any outline adjustments. So to set that point, I'm going to set it to eight here. And I'm pressing tapping this plus sign here and that adds that point. If I want to remove it later on, I will just tap the minus. And now I can drag the slider to change the size, but if I want to easily get back to that 8% point, it'll snap it in right there and that'll allow me to maintain consistency throughout all of the line work. One last thing that I'm going to do to help maintain this smooth, clean graphic look is I'm going to turn on some brush stabilization. To do that, I'm going to tap the wrench again. And this time under preferences, I am going to select pressure and smoothing here. Now this is going to affect all of the brushes that I use. And so that's just something to keep in mind if you come back to it, procreate and use a different project. Now it's important to note that this setting does not just affect only this project, this canvas, or only this brush. This affects all of Procreate, so anything that you draw hereafter will be affected by this if you leave it on. So this is not specific to this canvas or this brush, just something good to note. What I'm going to do is turn on stabilization. For me, I'm going to set it to about 50%, but this is totally 
optional and up to what feels right for you. And so what I mean by that is when you draw, you want to feel like you have control over the brush stroke, but what this is giving me is just a little bit smoother of a line. So if I go back into pressure and smoothing and I turn it off, my brush strokes are more organic and a little rougher. They're definitely not as smooth. So stabilization is going to smooth out some of those bumps, which is what I want for this almost vectorish graphic look. So I'm going to turn it to 50% for me. This, like I said, you might find that a lower or higher percentage works and feels right for you. And we're going to start off by drawing an arc for the head. So I'm starting from the symmetry point in the center line, and then keeping my pencil touched to the screen until it snaps into a arc. And you know that that does that because this message pops up at the top here that says arc created. So then with my pencil still to the screen, I can adjust to where I want. I want this center point to be level. I don't want a dip or a peak. So I want this essentially to be a horizontal connection point between the two sides. So I'm going to adjust until that's level there. And I'm also keeping in mind that I want to have enough width here. If you still need to make adjustments, you can tap edit shape here and you'll see the nodes appear only on one side, but any changes that you make will be mirrored. So this is a good point to make any adjustments that you want. And you can use the two finger tap to undo within this and it'll still keep your notes. Once I'm happy with that, I can just tap outside of the arc and it finalizes it. Now, if I were to undo, it does not go back into that editing mode. So that's just a good thing to note. Now that I've drawn my arc for my head, I am going to draw this snout. So moving down on my canvas, I want the snout to start maybe about a third of the way up from the opening of the shape. So I'm just gonna kind of eyeball that there and put a dot for reference. Maybe I'd want that actually to be a little bit lower. This is something that you can refine and adjust later on, but this gives us a good starting point to, to draw the shape from. And what I'm going to draw here is a bit of a rounded rectangle. Now, now I do want to refine this shape a bit. So to do that, we're going to build up the line here because I want it to be a little more rounded. And then I'm softening this curve on the upper portion of the snout. And then we can erase to make the line weight more consistent because we have built up that line weight a bit. So to do that, I'm gonna to switch to the eraser tool and I'm doing a long press on the eraser to erase with the same brush that I was using to draw. This will give us a similar edge texture. I am going to reduce the size down to about 4%. So it's about half of what I was drawing with for the line weight. And this is so that I can really make careful, small adjustments. So I think I started erasing the outside of this line, but what I actually wanted to do was the inside. So I'm going to go back, undo, and once again, we're just refining this shape. I also want it to be a little pinched, kind of like a, almost like a bow shape here. Maybe not that intense. Go up a bit and switch back to my eraser to again, smooth out that line. What you can do if you're having trouble achieving that consistent line weight between all of the erasing and redrawing, what you can do is erase so that you have an overall thinner line weight and you'll kind of want to erase from both sides here. And you can see I'm not being as careful or consistent with this because in a moment we will clean it all up 
by just switching back to the brush, I have it set to my saved point here and trying to center my brush stroke over the existing line there. And you still might find that you want to smooth out some of the shape, but that's an easy way to ensure that your line weight is more consistent. Then below the snout, I'm drawing just a small curve here, meeting in the middle for the lower lip. While we're here, I'm going to pop in and add a little bean shape for the nostril. And then we are going to decrease the line weight. I'm gonna go down to about 2%, zoom in here, and we're going to make this into kind of like a little apostrophe. Before I forget, I'm going to snap right back up to my saved point. And that's where the advantage of having that saved point really comes in. From here, we can draw the ears. So for the ears, we're going to start out a little above halfway. And I'm drawing an arc and then holding until it snaps into a quick shape. Then I'm gonna tap edit shape and I'm gonna slightly adjust this. The curve was really sharp on the outside of the ear. And I'm also going to then move him and I'll erase to make this gap down below later on. But since I'm here adjusting the nodes, I'm just going to move this line so it's no longer connecting with the head. And then starting from that tip of the outside ear, I'm going to make one more arc, holding until it snaps into a quick shape. And I'm lining this up to be about the same distance from the head as the upper part of the ear. And starting right about here from the ear, I'm going to draw a straight line back to the head. Next, for the horn, for a starting point, I'm going to start from about halfway between the center symmetry line and the ear. And then we're going to draw a straight line outward. Same as before, I am keeping my pencil touching to the screen until it snaps into a straight line. From here, you can kind of adjust the length and angle of what the horn is going to be. And then starting from that tip of the horn, I'm going to draw another straight line back down to the ear until it almost connects with that. The last thing that I wanna draw with symmetry on this layer are the eyes. So starting in this region, we're gonna draw some teardrop shaped eyes and fill them in solidly. And I want these to be a little rounder. So I'm kind of building up the shape after I draw the initial one until it gets to the point that I like. Okay, now that I have my eyes drawn, the rest of this I don't want to draw with symmetry, so I don't want it mirrored left to right. So what I'm going to do is tap on the layer to bring up the side menu, and then I'm going to toggle off drawing assist. Now we can draw in these shaggy bangs. So starting on one side, I'm just going to draw a series of arches and connecting them in this almost like a zigzag manner. And then switching to the eraser tool, we're drawing some light reflections in the eyes. And so for this, I'm going to do on the right eyeball, one the large and one small in the upper right side. And then moving over to the left eye, we'll do the same. Again, in the upper right side. So if I were to do that with symmetry, it wouldn't look as natural. It would kind of look like um, the eyes were pointing in two different directions. And so that's the advantage of doing this with symmetry turned off. One last thing that we wanna do is create just this tiny bit of separation 
in between the snout and the head shape. There we go. And that's something that you can do with symmetry turned on. I just happened to forget. Now, with our outlines done, we can move down to our color fill layer. This is set to assisted as well, which will just help us speed things up. Still using the same crispy mono weight crayon brush. I'm going to use the color dropper to select this body color for him. And to color this in, I'm starting by drawing a line spaced above the snout outline and then connecting to the head shape, the head shape. And then I'm going to draw my arc to follow the head shape curve. This doesn't have to be perfect. I actually think some gaps like this here help add to the true print look. And then I'm going to drag and drop from my color up here to fill the entire thing with color. Something important to note with drag and drop is this follows threshold. And so, so if I have my threshold set all the way to 100, you can see it ignores the lines that I drew and just fills the entire screen with color. You can adjust the threshold by sliding your pencil left to right, and it will remember the last percentage of threshold that you were on previously. Once I have that color dropped to fill, I'm going to do the same on this little ear triangle. So I'm leaving this gap in between the line work and the color that corresponds to the spacing of the ears as well. And this time I'm just filling it in because it's pretty small. Moving on to my pink, I'm going to use the color picker to switch to the pink. And I am still on this layer. We're going to be drawing all of our colors on this layer. With the pink, I'm creating a closed shape of the snout and then using color drop to fill that with color as well. And then filling in the lower lip and then moving up to the ears. I'm going to create a closed shape here. and color drop to fill there as well. Then we can move on to this ivory cream color and starting with the horns here, I'm gonna follow the shape of the head until I'm about the same distance away from the start of the ear. Then I'm gonna release that curve and make a straight line to connect to the rest of the horn. Then I can draw two straight lines to close this shape and color drop that as well. Then in my layers panel, I'm gonna select the layer to bring up the side menu, and then I'm gonna to toggle off drawing assist, and this will allow me to fill in the reflections in the eyes. And now we have all of our solid fill shapes done. Next, we are going to add the risograph texture. So on my color fill layer, the first thing that I'm going to do is tap to bring up the side menu, and then I'm going to select reference. The next thing I want to do, because we're going to be using the same colors for our texture, I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer down to about 50%. And this is just so that we can see everything that we're painting below. Then I'm going to do the same on my outlines layer. So I'm reducing the opacity there to about 50% as well. Now we're going to go in the same order. So black, orange, pink, and ivory. So starting with the black, I'm going to select the outline layer contents. An easy shortcut to do that from the layers panel is to just use two fingers to press and hold on the outline layer until the selection toolbar appears. Then when I tap back into my layers panel, I am making sure that I am on my Rizzo 1 layer. 
From here, I'm going to select the black color. Now we can choose our Rizzo texture. I'm gonna go with the Dense Rizzo Shade Brush. And I'm starting out with the brush size set to about 60% here. And for this, because it's our outline, I really want this to be quite dark. So you can see I've used a lot of pressure and gone over it multiple times. I haven't made multiple brush strokes, but I did go over it multiple times without lifting my pencil from the screen. So that gives us a very, very dark layer. Moving down to my second Rizzo layer, I'm going to switch to the body color and tap the selection tool to release the outlines selection. Then I'm going to tap back into the selection and making sure that it's still set to automatic, I'm going to tap on the screen to select everything that is that yak color. With my brush size set to about 20% for this, I'm gonna use lighter pressure to go over everything that I want in this selection, the entire mask, so that it's fully filled with color. And then I'm gonna zoom in, decrease my brush size to about 4%. And I'm going to layer in more pigment here under his shaggy bangs. and then increase my brush size to about 15. We're going to layer in a little bit on one side, on the left side, and a little more pigment on the lower side of both the ears. So this is a very small addition, but it is going to help add some depth. And you'll see the full effect once we hide our first reference layers but you can kind of see the layering of the pigment showing up here. And then moving down to our Rizzo 3 layer, I'm going to do release the selection and switch to the pink color. And then tapping the selection tool, this time I'm going to select everything that is pink. Then on my brush, I'm going to keep the brush set to about 15% here and fill in the ear. And this time I'm using a little more pressure on the underside and kind of like the inner ear area. And then a little more pressure on the bottom lip than the top. Then I can release the selection and moving down to my fourth Rizzo layer, I'm going to use the color picker to select the ivory color and tapping my selection tool, making sure it's set to automatic, I can select both of the horns, as well as the reflection of the eyes. Then I'm switching to my brush. I have it set here, still at 15%. We're going to do a very light pass to make sure that there's coverage all over the horns and the eyes, we won't forget those. And then I'm going to layer in more dense coverage on the underside of the horns and decreasing my brush size. I just wanna make sure that these reflections are really full coverage, super dense. So I'm going over that a couple more times. All right, now I can release the selection. Let's go ahead and hide our reference. And then when I hide those two lines is when you really get the full print effect of the risograph. So you can see that shading that we added in there comes through a lot more. Then if you want, you can shift these off register. I think I will just shift the line work layer a little bit. So I'm making sure that I on that layer and have it selected, I'm going to tap the transform arrow. And then outside of this bounding box, I'm just going to tap a few times, which will nudge the layer slightly out of alignment. and the direction that you tap in is the direction that the layer will move. Then I can release, and to remove this center line, we're just going to go into canvas and turn off the toggle for drawing guide. And that's it. That's the finished piece.